How's it going, guys? It is 3.56 a.m. Saturday, July 30th here in Japan, and we have a medium difficulty question for pathology slash internal medicine. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. 41-year-old man. He has a one-week history of fever, abdominal pain, generalized muscle pain, temperature 101 Fahrenheit, blood pressure 160 over 100. White blood cells, 20,000 per microliter, normal range 4 to 11. Onca studies are negative. ESR is elevated. Pulmonary examination shows no abnormalities. Urinalysis shows 2 plus blood and 2 plus protein. Muscle biopsy shows arteritis with segmental transmural necrosis or renal angiogram is shown. Question wants to know the most likely diagnosis. So let's just whip through the answer choices here. Choice A, eosinophilic granulomatosis mitosis polyangiitis. Wrong fucking answer. This condition, aka Charg Strauss. We're going to have an asthma-like picture with eosinophilia, neither of which we have here. Also, Chirk Strauss is almost always going to be P ANCA positive. We have negative ANCA studies here, okay? It's not, it's not impossible to have ANCA negative vasculitis, but we don't have the classic picture here. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, fibromuscular wrong answer. This is going to be a woman, 20s to 50s, who has high blood pressure uh, due to narrowing of the renal vessels. It's tunica media hyperplasia. And it's often confused with renal artery stenosis, which when you hear the term broadly, renal artery stenosis, that refers to atherosclerosis of the renal vessels, generally in a patient over the age of 60, okay? Younger, diabetes, smoking, but generally over the age of 60. Uh, Fibromuscular has nothing to do with atherosclerosis. It's non-inflammatory, okay? So ESR is elevated in this vignette. Well, it would be negative in fibromuscular dysplasia, and we're not going to have arteritis with segmental transmural necrosis. Okay, that does not apply to fibromuscular dysplasia. Now, I'm going to put in a comparative image of the renal angiogram in FMD. Some students get hysterical right now because in FMD, we have what's described as string of pearls or string of beads appearance, which when you compare it to this image, you can see in the FMD image, it appears that a greater length of the renal vessels is affected. Okay, whereas in this image, it appears that each microaneurysm sort of independently slash sporadically pops off of each renal vessel, but a greater length of the vessel of each vessel is not affected in comparison to FMD. Okay, you assembly doesn't expect you to be a fucking radiologist, but I already mentioned the uh, comparative uh, vignette findings that this does not align with fibromuscular dysplasia. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, granulomatosis with polyangiitis, aka Wagner, wrong answer. This is going to be hematuria plus hemoptysis. We have a normal pulmonary examination here. Also, head-itis colloquially, uh, which can refer to any problem with the head, otitis, mastoiditis, sinusitis, nasal septal perforation. And uh, they, they will tell you necrotizing glomerulonephritis in terms of the kidney. Wrong fucking answer. And it's C anca positive. Okay, we clearly have negative ancas here. Uh, choice D, polyuretic acidosa is the correct answer. So this is going to be medium vessel vasculitis that for whatever fucking reason spares the pulmonary vasculature, which is an exceedingly high yield detail. Okay, so we have pulmonary examination is negative and we have this renal angiogram that's buzzy. Okay, it's different uh, in comparison to the FMD as I talked about before. And we have this very buzzy pathophysiologic descriptor of arteritis with segmental transmural necrosis. Okay, they want you to know that. And you say, well, what about the rest of the vignette? Okay, well, yes, you can get generalized muscle pain. You can get abdominal pain. You can get leukocytosis and autoimmune flares. You get a surge of RAS due to the renal uh, findings here, renal uh, arterial findings that are going to lead to high blood pressure. Okay, so you can get protein and blood in the urine. ESR is elevated. Oncas are negative. Okay, so this mainly comes down to this descriptor of the arteritis with segmental transmural necrosis. Okay, very buzzy. And so a uh, key detail that's omitted from this vignette is you should know that about 30% of patients with PAN, acidosa, are seropositive for hepatitis B. Okay, so that's that could have made this vignette a lot easier if we threw hepatitis B positive here which I've made prior clips on the audio cue bank here on the YouTube, where I've talked about uh, hepatitis B and polyuretic acidosa. So uh, I'll just whip through the final answer choice. Takiyasu arteritis, wrong answer, aka pulseless disease. Uh, generally, uh, Japanese slash Asian women, 20s to 40s, 
So you're going to have uh, a non-palpable uh, peripheral pulse, okay, when you palpate the radial uh, artery, and you're going to have uh, ascending aortitis, classically, of the aortic arch. Okay, exceedingly low yield. I think maybe I've seen one question pop up on the NBMEs for step one and step two, respectively. You know the deal, I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.